Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the final round of the Mid-South Collegiate Open in Jonesboro, Arkansas. My name is Daniel Dravid, and I am joined by Matt Lauer, the lovely forehand thrower on our A-team. And today we have the final round of rotating doubles here to decide who the winner is. This tournament has consisted of one previous rotating doubles round and a singles round. Matt, you want to tell us a little bit about what's at stake here? Yeah, so there's a lot at stake for some of the teams at this event. There's both three D1 bids up for grabs and six D2 bid, bids up for grabs at the national championships. I'm not sure where Texas A&M was at, but I know that we, coming into this round, still needed a D2 bid, even though we had our D1 bid to Natty's. Mm -hmm. um, so that was our, our main goal was to, to grab one of those D2 bids. Yeah, and I believe Texas did have their bid, and so we're really, you know, playing off for pride here and bragging rights to, to see who can take this home. So coming into it, it's going to be um, the Illini versus Texas A&M, and we have a three-stroke lead going into it. So let's see how it plays out. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so starting off on hole one, we have a very downhill par four, 520 feet. Um, I'm going with a forehand here, just trying to get in bounds. Um, there's, you have to get within about 100 feet of the pin to mm -hmm. land in bounds. And this shot ends up uh, a little bit left, but, but lands safe. Yeah, it's in bounds, so we're kind of telling Gal Dalton, Dalton to just really rip on this and try and try and go for the eagle. The the OB definitely comes into play quicker than you than you might think, but look at this drive here. Parked. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. This is the blue tee. Um, so it's a it's a little bit shorter than the gold tee that a lot of the pros play, but really a very impressive accomplishment. Uh, Texas here for their first drive of the day. Looking a little overturned. I believe that should be in bounds, right? Yep. Yeah, that one was in bounds. So then I'm assuming they're going for a similar type of play where you have one, make sure you're getting in bounds, and then really gun this shot. Putting a little more height on it. Looked good. A little too flippy. Yep. Yeah, had great height to it, but just a little bit too much flip for the downhill. Yeah. It's uh, y if you want it to get there, you got to put some height on it. Dalton, re Dalton put it kind of low, but he really has so much power that he can just yeah, drive it low, yeah. um, and get the ground play up into that log. They have a really tricky straddle putt here, so they parked it. And now he's going for a forehand run. You like seeing a good forehand run like that? Yeah, good height, <laughs> good height, just a little left. But that's going to be a birdie for them, regardless, and that's going to be an eagle right here for us, as long as Trevor is good on it, and you know he is. Uh, next hole is course hole two, 350 feet uphill, plays like a million. Um, I I struggled getting the disc there on this hole all weekend. Um, first shot of the day here. You you really do got to rip it to get there. And even then, there's no guarantee. Yeah, and so we see this tricky little pot of trees to the right of the basket. It really does a great job of guarding against just throwing a pure hyzer yeah. all the way to the basket. So that's where you find yourself. But a, a good distance, though. Yeah, safe for par, but that's we're hoping for a birdie here. But it's a tough one. Great drive by Trevor. Little short, but it's it's really all you can ask for. Texas here. Kind of going with that right side. Looks a little too far right, though. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit pinched off from the basket. Let's see. Let's see if they can get an open look here. And that just got turfed a little bit. So they are probably going to be going with, um, yeah, the lie that's a little bit closer, but through the trees. You know, I was checking out my lie. You can see my disc up there a little bit, too. And there, there's there's some lines in there. It is not ideal, but there's some lines. Yeah. Yeah, it's a relatively thin tree at the bottom little shrubbery but we see some sort of funky run here <laughs> going with the scuba <laughs> yeah hey and that's what you get out of college disc golf doubles a lot of the times is just some some funky shots like that and so we have this putt i, I think this was a little outside the circle right it better have been yeah <laughs> <laughs> i guess so um tough uphill putt yeah gave it the height just a little bit of a grip lock you know and we're we're thinking it'd be great to get this but after the eagle you know, and a three-stroke lead. We're not too trying not to stress out about it. You know, it's it's a missed putt. It's no big deal. Yep. Yeah, Dalton also gave that gave that a pretty good height, just a little bit high. Yeah, a frustrating miss for him. But yeah, the hole three. You want to tell us about it? Yeah. So this hole, 324 feet. Um, it's basically a four-in hyzer. We had a tough headwind both rounds. Um, so I'm going Nuco S flex here. Yes, 
to try to mitigate some of that headwind, and I just saw it off a little bit, mm -hmm. um, leave it a bit short. Um, still an, a long open putt, but it's not a perfect shot. No, yeah, but the roll was nice. It's going to give us some sort of look at it. So Dalton's going to try and put a little more juice on it. Both you guys have fantastic yeah. forehands. The combos could not have worked out better for this course for our team. Yeah. And that was that didn't have a chance, really. That was that was too far inside, but we will have a look. Um, yeah, we were, you know, going into this round with a, a pretty good mentality. Um, we, you know, at this point, we had a four-stroke lead, so we're playing some pretty, I'd say, relaxed golf, you know, trying not to, well, we couldn't check scores. They were all paper. Um, that shot a little bit inside. I believe this is... I believe this is Noah. Yeah. This looks good. Yeah, he has a good good flip up to that shot. And it still gets caught, but inside the circle, I think, Rap. Yeah, kind of cut it off a little bit, but they're going to have something on the edge for that putt. Trevor. Really good run, just yeah. branches are tough to navigate. It, 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 was, it was the spot. right height. It was the right height. Oh. This was <laughs> such a good I run. forgot about that. Oh, my gosh. I... I wish I wish that went in. Yeah. Not for the not for the stroke, but just because of how cool it would be to have a bank shot like that. Yeah, that would have given us some good momentum too. Yeah, we would have we would have been feeling good. Um, because I mean, after you know, our first round was just a lot of birdies back to back to back, and you know, when you kind of no birdie, no birdie. That's a good one. Clutch putt by Texas there, putting the putting it back to three strokes. Um. Four feels a lot more comfortable than three, though. <laughs> and these guys are good, so nothing's comfortable. Um, yeah. Hole four, par four, that I believe is scored as a par five. Uh, you, you know, straight shot is kind of what University of Illinois likes to play. Other teams do like to go either further left or further right to approach the basket. But it's a really tricky approach. What do you, uh, what are you thinking on the approach here once you, you know, once you get down to that drive spot, Matt? Yeah, it definitely helps to be a little bit farther right. I understand, like, why they're trying to get as far right as possible because it kind of opens up the angle. It's sort of a shot that you have to um, either throw a forehand flex or sort of a flip-up backhand, mm -hmm. um, especially because there's a, a giant branch right in front of the basket about 45 short. Yeah. Um, so that kind of plays with the positioning a little bit. Yeah. I just sky this. This is – it was interesting. After this shot, Dalton came up to me, and he was like, man, I, I just doesn't look like you're pulling – the disc through and I'm like I feel like you're right I I kind of needed to hear that it's just one of those where you didn't didn't feel too good about it but yeah Trevor lays down something good here I believe is yeah this, is this good oh no it wasn't yeah it was it was almost a good shot just a little bit turned over with the crew yeah just kind of snagged a branch there mine ended up way far left so Dalton's going for just a big hyzer around this tree yeah, this is definitely a mash of a shot from how far back we are yeah huge mash yeah, he, he had great shot. Yeah, but short. About and as it, good as you can do from there for how how far that was. Yeah. So what's your? Tell me what's going on here. I I'm trying <laughs> to throw. I don't really have much of a gap, so I'm trying to play this inside gap, um, with the forehand, and I get really close to hitting it. It probably wouldn't have gotten any closer than Dalton's, but you got to um, try it though, yeah, right? Like yeah. if you know, you got to go for that. Uh, Texas set up pretty well here. A little bit shorter of a hyzer. If if Dalton's coming up short on the shot, it is a it is a far shot. Yeah. And uh, they were able to get a little closer. Very nice shot. Yeah, he did a nice job of pushing that branch as close as possible and sneaking underneath it. Yeah, really without, like, you know, risking hitting the branch and rolling and just right. really, really scooching up there. Very tricky shot, which I guess is why it is considered a um, par five, which, yeah, you know, is what it is. Wow. <laughs> that had yeah, some power. That did. So we're going to have... Yeah, I think I think what we said was Trevor runs this one first, and then I lay it up. I don't know. Lay, laying up and running strategies can get complicated. I feel like sometimes yeah. sometimes I feel like we fall in the less aggressive boat. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes of like maybe we should like lay this up, make sure we're not going to take like a dumb bogey. Um, and I, I think Dalton a lot of times tends to try to play more aggressive, which it, I think it's good we have those competing like balances on the team. Yeah, Texas here for. What 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 would be a, a huge a huge three? Oh, Asher just a little short on that putt, little low. Bit of a comebacker. Yeah, this slope is definitely even steeper than it looks on camera. It is, and I mean that's just the classic like 
all these hills are way bigger in person. A great putt by Noah. Yeah, that was a good comebacker. And good putt. Good Thanks. bag putt. Yep. Very good bag putt. I, I heard some of the Texas A&M guys questioning me after I uh, did that with the bag I on. feel like you were on bag edge range. You yeah. Know, like right on the edge of bag range. But I definitely wouldn't do that in singles. No. <laughs> uh, this hole is, what is this, hole five? This is really tough hole. You played the same tee as the as the pros play on this one. Um, I don't know. You want to tell us a little bit more about this one? This was this was your shot. Yeah, this one was the this was the really downhill left to right shot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's basically just a, a forehand hyzer, but it's not really quite that straightforward. You sort of have to flip something up. You can't throw something really overstable, um, just because the angle is sort of a slow um, slow flip up to to hyzer line. Yeah, and the slope at the end of the hole really just makes it, it makes it really hard to park, I feel like. Yeah. And you're always, you know, worried about the, the lower ceiling, too. This looked great. Yeah. It did not deserve that result. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that, those are one of those yeah, shots where it's like it hits a branch. It looks like the disc just explodes here. Yeah. Dalton here with, it was, is this a T-bird, right? Probably. I think so. Oh, that fucking T-pad, though. Yeah, he kind of gets away with one there a little bit. He got away with it a little bit, yeah. Got up there for a look. I think he, I want to say he slipped on the tee pad. Yeah, it did kind of look that way. It was a little bit of a grip lock, and he kind of spun afterward. Yeah, conditions were dry, though, which yeah. is nice. So those those turf tee pads were, you know, absolutely workable today. Yes. Trevor sat close. So I'm going to try and give it a bit of a run here. Signature Dan spin, just a little low. little little low, little little right, but what, what can you do? This is Texas to uh, for birdie, right? Yeah, yeah. This they had a great drive here. Great putt as well. Yeah. Ones you got to clean up for for birdie. Got to get them. Yeah, he was he was making a lot of putts for their team. He's a really good putter. Yeah. Uh, hole six. This is a par four from the blue tee. Uh, same tee, blue and gold tee. You want to go really just straight and fade a little bit. Um, if you can hyzer a little bit more and you have that type of power, you're going to get a little closer to the pin. But you also risk kind of cutting your angle off, so I think straight is the move here. And, and it's um, not a very long upshot, even if you go no. a little a little bit right. It's just not a long hole. Um, yeah. But uh, very, you know, very specifically shaped. Yes. It has to be a forehand on the approach. Not really anything else. You can you can get a backhand close, but you can't you can't park the backhand. Right. I love the ground. Throwing a nuke here. It is just well, well left. <laughs> yep, this is just a sawed-off hyzer. Yeah, just early, too much hyzer, all of the above. I think Trevor's going wraith here. Yeah, and it's uh, he overcorrects then, and I think he uh, he I think he hit that tree if I'm cor correct. Yeah. So we went up taking my drive, and you guys are just trying. You're trying to throw a roller here. Yeah, right? I, that was basically all I had, and I ended up just not turning it over enough with the downhill, um, and just went back into the woods. So that went straight into the brush too, yeah. right? So we yeah, can't. There's nothing from there. So this was this is this is kind of up to Dalton to put us in a position really just to get a par. And he does that. Yeah. That's fine. Sets up a a decent angle for a forehand coming in. Yep. Texas from their initial drives right here. Um, pretty much right where I think I believe that's Dalton's lie I think as it well. Is, yeah, they are just doing a stroke better than us right now. A little inside. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the ideal play here is a a stable forehand that you just hit the bottom of the hill and let it skip all the way to the basket. Kind of like that. Yep. Kind of just like that. Little inside, have some sort of straddle from the woods. Yeah. Oh man, you don't see many of these on on coverage. But You're going halo turn here. It is a full halo turn, twelve speed. It is what I felt confident with. That was so good. I would rather have it be long than short. Um, Trevor going with a zone here, so you know, very different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely different awesome. disc. And it's it's short. Maybe maybe a firebird would uh, would split the difference there for us. Yeah, but happy to get through. After the slightly short approach, they have a bit of a tricky uphill putt. It's not too far, but it's enough to make them think. Yeah. And this would, uh, I believe, cut it to mm. two strokes, and that's just a little low. Yeah. Dalton, little downhill look here. Oh, 
That was a good make. I was glad he made that one because that, yeah. that putt looked tricky from inside the branches. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't know how you would have been feeling after a bit of a par streak like that, you know, capped with a bogey. Yeah. Not not a good thing. Not a good thing. Hole seven. This is this is your tee shot, you and Dalton. Par yeah. four. This one you basically want to just drive it as far straight as you can. Um, yeah, pretty much just like that. Yeah. Um, the further, the further like, away from the tee that you get, the more the better of an angle you have coming in this hole because you sort of have to throw around this group of trees that guards the basket short to the left this you can kind of see this is a very non-traditional line that texas threw yeah. uh the highs are over everything making the approach easy as it gets yeah i believe matt's drive yeah i just um sawed it off a little bit here i, I was worried about the headwind turning it over yeah good to be in bounds regardless yep dalton puts some heat on it, it it's just a little pinched there um, so that's going to be a tricky approach. We, we took a long time to kind of figure out what we were going to do. We were really considering Matt's drive for a while. Um, ended up going with this. I kind of yeah. clipped those branches, and that's, that's what you're contending with is those branches with that spot. Yeah, this is a really tricky shot. Here Trevor's going, I think, uh, neutral mid-range here. Yes, he's um, going origin. Origin, yeah. And he was, he was initially saying he saw a gap through those trees. He was like, guys, guys, I can get through that gap. And we're like, don't do it, dude. Tre Trevor is definitely our gap hitter. But, he is. yeah, that one just a little bit too much Anheuser, and it cut rolls away from the basket. Yeah. You can see how easy this approach is for Texas. Yeah, this is the benefit of having 450 to 500 feet of power is being able to go over the trees and just make your approach um, a much easier angle. Yeah, and in hindsight, I mean – if we knew about this shot, I think Dalton. Yeah, Dalton had the power. Would have absolutely sure. practiced it. Uh, this is from the Berg. This is this is tough. <laughs> yeah, scary too. Yeah, but any guys that want to, I think I remember. Are you deciding to lay up here? Yeah, gotcha. Just take a Berg and pitch it under the basket. There wasn't a talk of running that one, right? We no. were we were pretty committed on that. Oh, that spit out. Did you re do you remember that? Yeah, this one, that was that, funny. That was, a, that was actually really just a funny moment. We, that was. We weren't actually worried about Trevor yeah. missing that. that no, I because I, I always even on those short ones, I like to give it the full rep. You know, you're not putting in a while. You got to stay warm somehow. Yeah. And I, I told Trevor, I was like, dude, just like lean over and it was, dunk it, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, you're, you gave it a little bit too full of a rep. I, a little <laughs> too full of a rep. A little too good of a rep. This is a hyzer. Not much to say about it. Um, this is a hyzer. Yeah, probably one of the easiest holes on the course, I would say. Yeah, if, if I mean, I'd, I'd have, probably might, didn't play the easiest because of some of the weird pars. Yeah. But very easy hole, just a, it's a backhand. Yep. Got to get it. Um, so we were going off a pretty pretty long par streak here. Yeah, I mean, you said um, And the, the lead had been cut to one stroke at this point. So Texas is really, I mean, they're, they're tearing it up out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and having fun doing it. I had fun doing it with those guys, too. I mean, it was... It yeah, was, they were a fun group to play with. Yeah, really fun guys to play with. Really nice. A little Firebird here. That. Yeah, really solid shot. Yep. You, you guys were just nailing this hole every single time in practice and in the first round. We were round. We were locked in. I mean, it's, uh, it's a shot you got to get. It's a shot. It's a shot that it's like, you know, ideally we have the me and Trevor pair and not the Matt Dalton pair. And it's like... yeah. The previous, the next hole though, it's like thank God we have the you know Matt <laughs> Matt Dalton pair and yeah hole nine forehand hole. Yeah, this is this is the hole I was thinking of um, on hole five. So this is this is a pretty downhill hole. Um, that's a a really really specific shot. I it took me a few um, a few different discs in practice to figure out what to throw here. Please. Um, you can see he's going for a little bit of a flex line. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just turns it over a little bit. The, the downhill makes it makes it really easy to accidentally turn something over. Um, but then if you go too stable, it's really easy to just skip flare way off to the right yeah. end of the woods. It's like you got to just, like, randomly get no ground play. Keep it inside and then, like, get just no ground play yeah. just because. Um, really just hard to do. Yeah, and Texas A&M finding a little bit of trouble on this hole. Yeah, not able to get to the green, but no doubt that, you know, the par is, is absolutely doable. This looks good. Yep, and I did just what I said not to I do, know. just turned it over a little too much. I love I love that reaction to just the body. Just, <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> Dalton here going with I think a was, little. Was this an emperor? I think it was an emperor. I think he went with a lot of disc here. He throws it perfectly, but it's just. Yeah, good shot. But it did this. Oh, ah. that's so, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, I didn't realize that this happened. I, re I mean, 
I I remember having having to do that putt, but I would have loved. I thought it was just going to check up there in the video for a second, but that yeah. does not match up with how it actually went. That's that's kind of sad to see. Texas just approaching for par here, giving a little run, and a uh, a tricky uphill putt for me and Trevor here. Yeah, a little low. little high split yep. the difference <laughs> um but yeah two pars on that hole and that's um you know gonna leave us with nine holes left and really just one stroke separating us so it is gonna be a battle down the stretch here um that concludes the front nine we're gonna come back at you with the back nine in just a second but first we want to thank the tournament director eli webb and the moose family for putting on this tournament we want to thank the illini production crew um you know nick toby and caleb for all working on that and um any final thoughts on the front nine, Matt? No, we'll just have to see how it plays out on the back nine. We're feeling a little bit, um, a little bit nervous with how close we Texas are. A&M is getting we to are. us. So we're, we're sort of holding on for dear life here. Yeah, kind of going in with like the three-stroke lead, then cutting it to here. It, it gets nervy, but we will see you in the back nine.